My talk today is on lessons learned embracing DevOps and security. Um, as you said, this is kind of out of the, the experience at Etsy being some of the first to go through this shift into DevOps, uh, into cloud, into agile. And it's really, this is the uh, a hint of the talk that I wish I could have given myself on day one uh, of what some of the things that were going to be the most important as we were really embracing DevOps and cloud and agile and things like that. Um, I'm going to give you the, the spoiler right now, which is that security really, this is kind of the conclusion and the, the theme of this talk, but it's that security really shifts from being this kind of outsourced gatekeeper and blocker to actually enabling teams by default, right? The, the goal of really modern approaches to application security is around how can we enable teams to become security self-sufficient and give them the tools so that they can actually secure their code as they're writing it. Um, so really what has changed? Um, there's really kind of three things that are different in this DevSecOps world or Sec DevOps or whatever you want to call it this week. Um, it's that first that change happens multiple orders of magnitude faster than it used to. Right? So I would assume most of the folks here have actually lived through the kind of waterfall world, right? Where you might release every 12 or 16 or 18 months. Um, that was certainly by far the standard uh, for a, a lot of my career was really seeing waterfall development shops. Um, now we've really leapfro leapfrogged our way forward from, you know, not only every 18 months to every month to every week to every day uh, to, like Ingrid just said, you know, 100 times a day, same, same thing at Etsy, same thing at, at a bunch of leading uh, tech companies is they're doing dozens of times a day up to hundreds of times a day. Um, and this really changes the way that we think about security because security is no longer that gatekeeper. Um, the second is that security only becomes successful if it can really bake into that development and DevOps process. Uh, it's kind of like legacy IT processes when people were first starting to use cloud, right? When, when people had to go requisition a new server from the IT group, anything like that, or the sysops group, and it took six months to get a server back, and then suddenly you could just put your credit card down and spin up some instances on AWS, it short-circuited that whole approach and everything there. And security is kind of facing that same existential threat right now of if it can't come to the table and enable groups to move faster, it will be routed around. Uh, and then for many, and I think this is an important point uh, for folks who are not from a security background, but it's that the first, a lot of categories of attackers, the cost of attack is now so cheap that you don't have to be specifically targeted because of your brand. Right? For a lot of web applications, you're just going to get attacked by virtue of being on the internet. It's not like I would hear a long time ago, like, oh, well, we're not that big of a site or we're not that big of a deal, so no one's going to come after us. The reality is it's so cheap to actually attack a lot of different web services that just by virtue of being on the internet, you're going to be attacked. So how do these old processes actually kind of diagram out? Uh, they, they look a lot like this if you try to do the old gatekeeping controls. Uh, so let's, let's change our approach here to, to safety. Um, and what, what are the new concepts that security should actually focus on in this kind of new approach? Um, the main two that I'm just going to give kind of a hint at uh, today are around visibility and feedback loops. Um, these are really the kind of new approaches. The other side is really around changing your SDLC and your static analysis and your testing, uh, like stuff Ingrid talked about, like the stuff that Jim Anico is going to talk about later today. But visibility and feedback are really the, the, new, the new concepts, except these are not actually new concepts. Right? What's really interesting here is that we've been doing this in many other facets of development for quite some time. Right? If you look at performance monitoring, if you look at A-B testing and data analytics, uh, all of these are about visibility and feedback. Um, performance monitoring in particular, right? It used to be a very kind of dark art that a few specialized folks would do. And then you saw the emergence of companies like New Relic and App Dynamics and Datadog and, and folks like that, where the whole point became that anyone could get this data and you could have a much tighter feedback loop as you're building new infrastructure or building new applications. And you could see right away, okay, yeah, this actually, that new function I just introduced actually just completely blew out our performance metrics, and we've got the visibility into what's happening there, and we've got that very tight feedback loop of, hey, this change introduced a real issue. Um, so security is actually just starting to learn these same lessons, that it really needs to be about empowering visibility to the teams and providing that tight feedback loop. And that, this is really kind of the theme of today, and this is the, the main message I want to get across. Um, 
But first, I'm going to give you a story from the the old days, uh, which would be the mid '90s to to date myself. Um, and how we used to have security visibility into our organization, which this is actually a real, the next two screenshots I'm gonna show you are actually a real example that, that happened in the 90s. Um, it was one of my favorite uh, attacks that actually occurred back then. So the first is, you know, what your marketing site would look like when you normally came into work. Uh, this was for a US airline um, and they would come in and they had a nice, you know, airplane flying up and all these cities that they served and everything like that. And then one day they came in and their logo was their airplane was on fire. Uh, and a bunch of the, the marketing language I believe was, so we killed a few people, big deal. Um, now I'm not in marketing, but I'm fairly certain that's not a good uh, logo and description for any company. Um, but this was really how we had security visibility before. Um, it was really one end of the extreme or the other. We, we felt for our organizations that everything was fine or we just had a massive breach. And so today you might be on the, you know, the front page of some major newspaper or anything like that. Um, and that's the way that you get notified instead of your airplane logo being on fire. Uh, but the real challenge here was that there was no visibility and there was no feedback, right? It was all or nothing uh, on that side. And so how can we actually improve? Well, I'll give you an example of kind of where we all really are today and where we should be enhancing the systems that we have to really improve on this. Um, so I think a good example that just really visually illustrates this is data that we all have today and which of these is a quicker way to spot an attack or some sort of feedback loop into the way you want to be adjusting your security. Uh, the first is logs, right? We all have logs, um, and they are a great starting point for a lot of different things. You know, everything from performance to security to instant response to all sorts of stuff. Um, but the problem is your logs are very reactive typically, right? You can go, when you've been alerted to some sort of change in some other way, um, some sort of incident or anything like that, you can go back to your logs and reference them. What you really want to be working towards is a position where you're much more proactively aware of what's going on, right? If you're drowning, going back, if you're drowning in the noise of logs like we all are, well, chances are you're almost never going to see anything there unless you know you should be looking for it. If you can start to bring some visibility forward and put that uh, in front of your organization, it's much easier to look at something like this and see, oh, something just happened that I should be knowing about compared to logs just streaming by all the time and you're not really sure what's actually happening there. Um, the real key lesson learned on this um, is really around surfacing this data for everyone. This was, this was a big mistake we made right away, um, right in the, in the early stages, and it was a real lesson learned, was that your security visibility, you don't want to surface that just for one or two isolated security experts, um, or you know, one or two people on the security team, and this is only on a graph that's uh, buried in some cubicle somewhere or something like that, um, or eight pages deep on an intranet site or anything there. What you really want is, to bring this visibility to everyone. And you can kind of think about that um, in the same way with those other systems of like performance testing and A-B testing and things like that. You know, typically if you run an A-B test uh, with your customers, uh, it's not just the individual developer who wrote the code around the A-B test who gets that data. It's your business analytics folks, it's your development leads, it's your product leads, uh, it might even be your executives uh, because you really want to be able to surface that those metrics up there to be able to say, hey, we are going to actually make a change to our service and here's the data to back it up. It's the same thing from the security side. You don't want security to be this isolated you know, group or pocket over here. You really want to be empowering everyone else because that's the only way in which you scale. As we're all embracing DevOps, as we're all embracing cloud, the only way in which we actually achieve that velocity is by empowering everyone with the, the tools and the data they need. Um, so this was something that, that we did early on at Etsy of that the, the missing bit of this picture is actually where this was located in the office. And I think that's actually the most powerful bit is that this wasn't just in front of you know, one or two engineers in the corner of the office. This was actually in the middle of the main engineering floor where anybody walking by could see that. And a bunch of uh, not only engineers on that floor, but a bunch of product folks and designers and everyone like that. And so you actually, just by walking around the office, it was very easy as you're coming and going to different meetings and everything like that, it's very easy to just, at a glance, get a state of the health of the system, right? The, like the, the graph in the upper left uh, on here, 
that was actually the money graph. So how much was flowing through checkouts at any given time? And if a developer hit deploy and broke the site and the money graph went to zero, it was very easy for everyone in the business to see that something major was going on. And this is why everyone looked stressed and was running around the office all of a sudden. Um, same thing with security, right? You want to bring that visibility in that same way. And what we really learned out of that was when we put some of those previous graphs out in the public space, we got so much more engagement by folks who said, hey, like, are we being attacked right now? Like, what's going on? Like, oh, yeah, they're attacking this. These people are attacking this part of the site. They're looking for vulnerabilities like that. And I can't even count the number of times I then have the discussion of, oh, that's actually, I, I work on that functionality. That's my side. I didn't, I didn't think anybody would ever attack us right there. You're like, oh, well, here's your data. Like, here's how you can actually see when people are attacking you, and here's how you can react accordingly. Um, so then how do we start to combine that with feedback? Uh, Office Space is like 19 years old now, so I feel like this is actually a vintage meme at this point, and I can, I can make this one. Um, but there's really three quick things on, on feedback loops. Um, the main way in which we're really seeing the rise of modern feedback loops in application security is around bug bounties. Now, I don't just necessarily mean paid bug bounties like you pay everyone out who finds a vulnerability. This works just as well with a simple disclosure program. It works just as well with Hall of Fame programs. And then you can graduate up to bounties. So I'm not saying everyone needs a bounty. What I'm saying is you should think about how you should put a disclosure program in place when you're ready, graduate that up to maybe a Hall of Fame bounty. And when you're ready from there, graduate that up to a full uh, monetary bounty system. Um, but the way in which we get that modern feedback is the combination of bounties and pen tests. So pen tests used to be the only way we'd get this, but we'd only run pen tests every once a year or so. And so it was a very isolated way of getting feedback. It was not real time. There was not a lot of data you got out of that other than here are some bugs. And guess what? We all have bugs. Um, but the replacement, or the, the key here is that bounty is not a replacement for pen test. What's, what's really nice about any of these bounty programs is you can actually use that in conjunction with pen tests. So you can really say, bounty is going to give me much more real-time feedback. Um, it's going to give me you know, a lot of, in general, and sometimes this is, there are plenty of exceptions to this rule, but a lot of times it gives you much broader but much shallower feedback. You're going to see a lot of your applications covered to a very minimal depth. Um, not minimal, but not extensive depth. Whereas your pen tests, because of the way you have a contractual relationship with your pen testers, you can direct them to only test this part of the application, and maybe you want it to test very deeply on this one part, or maybe be wider across a larger part of the, the organization. Um, so really, the combination of the two, it's what gives you that both that depth with your pen testing and the breadth with your bounty uh, participants and everything there. And, and combining those two, it gives you much more real time and deep feedback into what's going on. Um, so I'm going to close out here with uh, just a story of how this can go right. There are a lot of times in security where things go horribly wrong. Uh, but I think that this is a just a good positive note to think about of how you can kind of uh, have real success as you're embracing these ideas. So this was actually a, a real story that happened to us at Etsy. It's public. You can look it up on the, the Reddit thread that I, that I linked there um, and see the full thing. But what, what happened was there was an attacker that uh, was attacking Etsy, and we had a bunch of this real-time visibility and everything there. So we actually got to watch them discover a vulnerability in real time. And so we watched them discover a vuln, and they, they tested a few different payloads. They confirmed that they had found a, you know, like a, they had a working exploit for it and everything there. And then they went away for a little bit. And while they had gone away for a few hours, we actually pushed a fix for that vulnerability out from underneath them. And so then when they came back, a few hours later um, to test it again before they reported it. They tested it and it wasn't working anymore. And so they they wrote into us and they actually it was really it was a really fun interaction. Um, the, the guy writes it up a bunch more in here, but the the kind of full story of what happened is he wrote in and he's like, hey, so I promised I was going to report this and I was testing from my home IP. So you guys aren't going to sue me, right? Like we're all we're all good here, um, which was a, a very different interaction. And we're like, oh no no, it was great. Actually, if you had noticed, we messaged your Etsy account when you first started testing, just saying, hi, we see you. Uh, here's a report uh, email if you, if you find anything. Um, and we had this great back and forth, and they, they wrote up this blog post about it. And so the point of this story is that, like I said, security can often have so many negative stories. 
as you can think about really moving forward and investing in this sort of stuff, you can actually have very positive outcomes, uh, not just in terms of early detecting vulnerabilities and, and fixing them earlier and earlier, but we actually had a great interaction with this researcher because of it. And so that's really the thought I want to leave you with is that so often the, the shift to DevOps and cloud and agile and CI, CD and all of these things that increase velocity, security often is, is listed as the blocker for that, as to why it's unsafe to do it. And I really feel strongly that it's the opposite, that if you really approach bringing visibility and feedback loops to your security program, embracing DevOps, embracing Agile, embracing these new ways of moving and developing quicker actually makes you more safe overall. So thank you for having me. Yeah.